Hey, what's happening guys? Today, we're going to take a quick look at the Kawit's Smart Pen Type Multimeter. This is the ST120. You an idea of everything it says on there. So this thing, uh, specifications, DC voltage 0 to 600 volts. AC 0 to 600 volts, um, resistance 0 to 4 mega ohms, capacitance 0 to 4 millifarads, frequency 0 to 4 megahertz, phase test, NCV test, live wire test, diode test, and continuity test. There you go. You can take that, download the manual. Or you can get that one and go to YouTube. Well, you're already on YouTube and see their video. So in the bag or in the box, we have the manual. We have a ground lead, which we will be using in this case because this is a different type of multimeter than we usually look at. We have two AAA batteries. And we have the device itself. It is marked on here cat 3 600 volts there's where our common lead is going to attach and then we have our test lead up here so I will put some batteries in this get it hooked up and we'll be back and have a look at it all right so put the batteries in we have the ground lead attached we'll remove our protective covering there and we'll bring in the voltage tester this is the ad 584m and it's been warming up for about 15 minutes so we should be close has four voltages we can test two and a half five seven and a half and ten volts and we'll see how this thing does so let's turn it on it says auto Two point five one two. I guess I should probably turn out all these bright lights so you can see that reverse lit screen. One second. Yeah. Now you can see that much better. So two and a half volts. Two point five one three. Acceptable. Take it up to five. Five point oh one. Good. Seven and a half. Two. I'm noticing a slight trend. And we're reading high on all of these. So we're going to try a couple more things here. This is 10 volts. 10.03. Let's uh, me get a power supply. Hang on. Okay. Got the power supply on. Set for 15 volts. It is, it's not actually on, it's on standby. Now I will hit the on button. New four. Okay, see it's still reading a little high. All right, let's take it up. We'll go up to 20 volts. I mean, it's very close, don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I am seriously nitpicking here. All right, let's take it up again. All right, as my power supply will go, which is 32 volts. 32.11. 32.111. Yeah. Like I said, it's very close, and I am being very nitpicky. 
All right, figure we take a look at some diodes now. Make sure this is in the right order here. Right polarity, rather. So we need to go function, resistance, continuity. There we go. Diode. Showing a drop of what? Five point five seven five is good. That's not good. All right, nice. Start at the low end of these LEDs with the red one, which has lit and showing 1.741. The yellow lit showing 1.822. Green. It's lit. I don't know. Can you guys tell it's lit? It's, it's barely lit. 1.837. Now I doubt it's going to light this blue one. No. It will not light the blue one. Of course, it's not going to like that one. Let's see what the uh, diode test voltage is there. So we'll bring in another Kowitz meter, the ST600Y. Which we'll put in the DC voltage mode. And we'll find out at what voltage is testing our diodes. I'm guessing right around two volts, 2.271. So that's a little low. I like to see the multimeters testing them around three, 3.2 volts, because that'll light up just about anything. But this is using uh, two AAA batteries for, you know, what? Nominally three volts. So it just doesn't have the capacity, the overhead. All right, so. So I can't read them. Let's zoom in. We're going to do capacitors. 0 0.1, 47, 3.3. .3. That's some interesting order, aren't they? 10 and 1,000. So literally, we don't really care if they're exact. They're never going to be. We just want to make sure it can read them the different sizes. So we'll take this guy again and put it in capacitor mode. You see we got the little NF for nanofarad. So this was the uh, point 0.1. Put one micro, 113 nano. Next one, I think it was what, 10? Oh no, 47 microfarad. It's reading 53.2. See if I can get a little lower in there. So you guys can get a better view. There's our 3.3. All right, that one's in there backwards. All right, everybody, stand on your head so you can read this. Ten point two four, and the last one, our final. This is the big one. It's a thousand. Let's see what she says. Thinking, thinking. Point nine eight nine. Yeah. This is a real good job. Let's see. Uh, continuity. Nice and loud. The green light's a good thing. I like it. Doesn't he actually have a light? Okay, there's our hold function. Yeah, it's got a light. So if you're checking your fuse box in the dark, that's a nice thing. All right, frequency. Let's 
This is the, uh, this should be non-contact wire testing. So I'm putting the protective cover back on it. Gonna remove that. And hang on a second. Turn that light on up here. That one right there. Let's see what happens. Perhaps I'm not using that right. Let me look that for a second. Hang on. Okay, so it turns out after going through the manual that it does not actually have an NCV test. What it has is this live wire detect. Or we're actually going to have to put it into a socket, which is no problem. Uh, for a weak field, it will display an L. For a strong field, it will display an H. So here's what we'll do. Get you down here to my back line. Put that in there. Oh, yeah, there we go. Let's see. I'm getting an L and two dashes. What we got over here? Um, yeah. Let's have a look inside of it. Not a captured screw. But at a $20 price point, we're probably not going to see captured screws, although there is a nice threaded brass insert there. These are tight, so they're going right into yeah, right in the plastic, there's not going to be any, uh, any inserts in there. Oh dear. It would appear... We're going to violate our quality control sticker. I don't think I'm missing anything. We find a sputter. One moment. All right. Let's see what we got here. Ah. I am missing one. Good thing I found that. I don't want to snap this thing. This is a interesting little unit. Wow. So it's got... Oh, that's the battery. That's the battery frame. Is that little sub-assembly there. Phew, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it has a $20 price point. It is, for the most part, accurate. I'd say it's okay for 20 bucks. It, I think where it's going to find its home is in people that have a use for this type of form factor. That's where this is going to turn out to be useful.
I think it's really lacking the non-contact voltage testing. That's uh, commonly found in most multimeters. I think they really dropped the ball with that one on here. Maybe there's a reason for it. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not trying to knock it. It's a fine little multimeter. It's at a good price point. It doesn't particularly appeal to me simply because I have no use for this type of form factor. Now, if I did, you know, I wouldn't have any problem with this. Um, I would definitely be using it on household or less. This is not safe for industrial use. Cat 3 600 volt. Yeah, I wouldn't put it anywhere over uh, US 120 volts. Unless you want to blow up in your hand. Okay. I'd like to thank Kuwait for sending this in. It's an interesting little device. The ST120. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this video, hope you give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.